Hi, my name is Joanna. I'm a psychologist from Sydney, Australia. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm on this bed today because we're going to talk about self-care for psychologists and for other people who work really hard, which is probably all of you. One of the analogies I love most is when you're on a plane, they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on everyone else. And that's the exact same thing for psychologists. You can't really help anyone else unless you've supported yourself. And so today I'm gonna to show you my self-care routine as a psychologist and maybe give you guys some ideas for things that you might incorporate into your own lives as well. Alrighty, let's get started. Number one, sleep. If you're going to take one thing out of this video, it's to get enough sleep. Sleep is such a favourite of mine because it has a huge range of benefits that everyone already kind of knows, from motivation and energy in the morning, to also boosting your immune system and consolidating your memories overnight. So for those viewers between 14 to 17 years of age, the National Sleep Foundation recommends 8 to 10 hours of sleep per night, and for those who are 18 plus all the way up to 64, it recommends between 7 to 9 hours of sleep per night. Other less known benefits of sleep include preventing weight gain as well as reducing the chance of heart problems and that's because your body gets into a state of stress and it releases cortisol when you are sleep deprived and stress is related to increased cravings and probably also less self-control when it comes to controlling what we eat. So for me personally, sleep has become quite an issue the last couple of weeks because I've moved to this new place and I'm just not used to it and the sights and the sounds and stuff like that and I'm a pretty light sleeper and so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to film this video was actually because I was thinking, gosh, my sleep has gotten so bad. So I've really been trying to sleep earlier. So before 10.30, I've been trying to reduce my media before bed. And I've also been putting my phone into like night mode, dark mode, so it reduces the blue light that reaches my eyes before bed. If people are really interested in sleep, feel free to comment below and I can do a specific video just on sleep hygiene, which is something that we teach a lot of clients in the psychology office. So. Second is exercise. Exercise has a massive range of physical benefits, which I'm sure everyone kind of knows. However, psychologically, it is really helpful because it releases endorphins. And so you've probably heard the saying, you never regret a workout. And it's usually because even though it might not feel very nice when you're first starting, by the time you've finished, you're just full of endorphins, which are like our happy hormones, and they really help uplift mood. And so research has shown that exercise can actually help with depression and anxiety symptoms. And it's also been shown to reduce cortisol Cortisol, which again is reducing our stress levels. For me, exercise includes swimming. I started swimming when I was really young because I had really bad asthma and so swim training has just been a really big part of my life. And I really like hiking on the weekends. Uh, I've attached a clip where I went hiking with my parents over Christmas. I also like dancing, which you guys have probably seen in my day in the life video. Those are just a few of the things that I like to do in terms of exercise, so I'm going to show you some clips now. Hello and welcome to my very first voiceover. Oh, look at that. Not great dive. It's been a while. But I do love swimming a couple of times a week. It's awesome cardiovascular exercise, but also just a really great way to get in touch with my breath and just have a relaxing time. Look at me go. And here are some shots from a recent Christmas trip. Like I said, I was hiking with my parents in the Blue Mountains, which is in, it's probably like two hours away from Sydney. That's my brother. And finally, here's a clip of my recent dance training. We're doing partner work, and this is my lovely partner, Simon. Ooh, and up. Another note with self-care is it needs to be scheduled and prioritised. So a lot of us, we put down in our schedule our meetings, our meet up with friends and family, our exercise, but self-care is kind of the thing that comes after we've done all that stuff and it's just incidental if we have time for it. We need to flip our view of self-care and actually make it something that we do that is purposeful and is in our calendars. One easier way to do that is actually just to set up habits. And so you do the same thing every day and it just becomes part of your normal life. You don't even have to think about it. Just an example of something that I've set up and made a habit is that my before bed routine, I make sure that I write in my journal. And so I'm actually gonna show you, this is the Q&A five year journal and Basically, it's got a page for every day of the year and it's got a little prompt as well, but usually I just like to write about what happened in my day. And this is my second book, so that means this is my eighth year in a row of writing this book nightly. And so if I want to look back and reflect on anything, I can find the exact day that I've met people or I've 
learnt about certain things, but also it's a really great way to reflect at the end of a day. And it's really short, quick and easy. It takes like a minute. And so that's a habit that I've built into my self-care routine. The other thing that I keep by my bedside table is my Kindle. I really love reading and it's a great way to settle down before bed without looking on my phone. And so having both my diary and my Kindle right on top of each other, right beside my bed, are both things that help me that are habits that I don't even think about anymore. Number three is food and particularly healthy food in terms of self-care. Now, I love fried chicken and I'm a massive, not very secret fan of KFC. However, every single time I eat it, half an hour later, I'm just a bit of a blob and I feel kind of gross and oily and my mood goes down as well. Healthy eating is great because it gives you physical energy and it's good for your body, but then mentally it has so many positive benefits because you feel proud of yourself, you feel like you have more energy and you're not so sluggish afterwards. Food is also a really big part of my culture and I, I grew up in a Chinese family where a lot of our really happy moments happened around food and my mum's a great cook. And so for me, food is just one of those things that is so fun to do because it's relaxing and fun and it can be social and creative, but then afterwards you have this really delicious thing as well. Ooh, and now onto the really riveting content. Here I am cutting some lettuce and then giving it a good old wash. Um, I really love washing all of my salad as soon as I buy it and just keeping it in the fridge. Oh, this is my favorite thing ever. I don't know if you guys have a salad spinner. Yeah, here I am explaining how much I love the salad spinner. But you just put veggies in, you spin it a little bit, and suddenly you've got dry as a bone lettuce. It's really good. Yeah. Look at how excited I am. <laughs> so we're going to start by laying down some lettuce. Tomato. Chicken. Number four. So this one is about cleaning and decluttering. Cleaning is one of those things that you can clean your physical space, but somehow it does this magical thing where it feels like you're clearing up mental space as well. So here's a snippet of me cleaning a kitchen and also doing some meal prep for work tomorrow. Alrighty, on to a fast-forwarded cleaning montage here. So after lunch, I decided that I wanted to meal prep just something for the next day at work because it saves quite a bit of money if you're bringing food from home. And then afterwards, I just did a bit of a tidy. Now, research-wise, we know that cleaning at moderate levels is really good for mental health because it gives us a sense of control over our environment, our space. We're probably more organized. Um, and anecdotally, I just love tidying up. It makes me feel good every time after I finished. However, we also know excessive cleaning and if you feel like you can't get anything done until your, your desk is perfect, then maybe it's a little bit too much. And so I think with all self being self-care, balance is really key. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far. I've been having a lot of fun with this video, trying out some new techniques, fiddling with DaVinci Resolve. So far, Fingers crossed everything has been going pretty good and I'm really enjoying the process. Number, I think we're up to five. Mindfulness. This one is so important as well. I know I said sleep was really important, but maybe mindfulness is the most important. Mindfulness is not just meditating and sitting on a cushion and being silent and saying, ah. Mindfulness is just being in the present moment, concentrating on what's happening right now. And the breath is a great one, which is why I think a lot of people do meditation because our breath can regulate a lot of things like our mood. We breathe really calmly when we're calm, in and out slowly. When we're angry, we're like, <laughs> When we're really anxious, people start hyperventilating and their breath comes really, really fast. And so modulating the breath and being aware of the breath is a massive skill. However, for people who find that that doesn't really work for them or they really don't enjoy that, you can be mindful with anything. And so I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can be mindful with as well. So, eating a blueberry. You can mindfully walk. It's actually really fun. I really recommend just trying to walk really slowly and notice the movement of your feet. You can mindfully brush your teeth at night or in the morning. You can mindfully pet your bush um, plant. You can mindfully shower. And probably the thing that everyone recognizes, you can also mindly, mindfully, not mindlessly, mindfully meditate and 
This is a really great practice that I really need to get back into. At one point I was doing it every day and I really saw positive benefits. Mindfulness has just an incredible host of benefits and it's in a lot of different types of therapies as well. In fact, one of the most popular types of therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, also has a mindfulness based version as well. And so I think mindfulness is one of those skills that if you have it in your daily routine, it gets easier and easier. For those who think that sitting down and doing meditation is going to be relaxing the first time, that's a total myth. So if you find it really difficult, don't give up. It's really normal. You're basically training your mind and it's definitely not easy to try and calm it down and have it concentrate on your breath or just the sensation of your body. So keep on trying. Don't give up. And last but definitely not least, social. And this encompasses talking to families, encompasses talking to friends, or even just going out and doing something with random strangers, just having that connection. Human connection is so important to our development and our well-being. In fact, I'm not going to get super into it, but there are all these studies that show that people who don't have human connection or babies that don't have it are actually stunted in their growth. It's an essential, integral part of being human. And we're social creatures. During COVID, it's more difficult to reach out to those people. And so maybe reach out via a text message or a video call or maybe a socially distanced physical meetup. For me, it's really important to talk to friends who are also psychologists and talk to my supervisor. We have weekly one hour supervision and this is not a, a social chat per se, but it's really helpful to have someone who understands where I am and the, the journey that I'm on as well. And, um, other sources of support include going home to family, having a chat to my partner, as well as my best friend. And this Arvo, I got a chance to chat to my best friend. So you'll meet her here. Her name is Wendy and she's doing a combined PhD and a master's of clinical psychology at UNSW. And if you are interested in that combined PhD, masters, she's still studying at UNSW because it's a longer degree. Feel free to comment below and Maybe I will wrangle her into making a video with me as well. So for a lot of us, during COVID, our social lives have looked a little bit like this, or maybe even this. How was your day? It was all right. You're looking really great. Thanks. So are you. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, meet Wendy. This is my best friend. She's incredible. She's doing um, a combined master's PhD at UNSW. And here we are just catching up about our favorite salad place on campus and so if we do do a video there then maybe I'll let you guys check it out it's called stock market Wendy's really great because she understands what it's like to be a psychologist we kind of went through our schooling together so we have a really long shared history catching up with her is such a highlight and we also do organization things together we have things called ninja dates and they really help us plan and organize our lives and it's just a, a chance to catch up and have a chat as well so final takeaways from this video Self-care is not selfish. This applies to psychologists, but really to anyone. Especially when I was starting out, I really felt guilty for, for not working and not preparing more for sessions. But more and more I've learned that it's a really big disservice to your clients if you're not taking care of yourself. Motivation-wise, you're not there. You're not able to concentrate and be present in sessions. And it's really hard to show up fully and to be genuine and to be able to listen and be fully there if you feel like other parts of your life are crumbling and you're stressed and overwhelmed and you're tired. Self-care is integral to being a psychologist and it's so important to prioritize it. Otherwise, I've heard other psychologists say there's no way you can really make it long term and to, to have it be your career unless you make self-care a habit. The other thing I really want to touch on is the difference between pleasure and happiness or contentment. And so with self-care, there are things that cause us temporary pleasure. And so, yeah, sometimes self-care means going home and just lazing and flipping on TikTok or Instagram and just being able to decompress. Other days, self-care is doing what you least want to do, is really tough to do, but long-term actually gets you closer towards what's important to you and what you're passionate about. And so, Maybe an example of that is after a long day at work, I could curl up on the couch and watch a nice movie, eat a tub of ice cream, even though I'm lactose intolerant. Um, or I could haul myself up and make myself a meal for the next day at work. In the moment, it's 
way more fun to go watch that movie and enjoy my ice cream. The next day, I'm probably really annoyed at myself because I might feel sick from the movie, I feel tired, I can't show up in session, whereas I feel proud of myself if I've meal prepped and I look back and I say, oh, thank goodness I did that last night. Sometimes think about self-care as what would your future self thank you for? And so I just wanted to add that as my last little bit about not just doing things that are fun and pleasurable, but sometimes self-care is doing what is hard. Alrighty, I think that is all I have for today. I really hope you were able to take some inspiration from today and maybe some ideas or maybe it just made you think about self-care some more. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a big like. It really helps support my channel. And subscribe if you'd like to see more weekly videos on what it's like to be a psychologist, uh, my personal journey, and also the things that I'm learning on the way as well. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.